The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's the University Church as we gather for this celebration of the Eucharist. This marks the beginning of the Triduum, the three days which are rolled into one day, during which the mystery of our salvation and redemption in Jesus Christ unfolds. It's a liturgy characterized by great drama as we commemorate the institution of the Lord's Supper, that first gathering on the night that Jesus was betrayed, when he took bread, and when he shared the cup with his disciples. But it's also a moment when we remember the mandatum, the mandate, a new commandment which he gave to his disciples as he taught them to love one another. And this love is manifested in service, and that service is represented in this liturgy tonight by the washing of the feet. Following the Eucharist, we will then move from the upper room to Gethsemane. And so we will join with Jesus and the disciples up in the chancel, our own version of Gethsemane, as we watch with the Lord and we will await the story of Jesus' arrest. So as we gather for this Eucharist this evening, let us spend a moment in silence as we remember the great mercy of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Unless I wash you, you have no part in me. Let us confess to Almighty God our sins against his love and ask him to cleanse us. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray that we may love one another as Christ has loved us. God our Father, you have invited us to share in the supper which your Son gave to his church, to proclaim his death until he comes. May he nourish us by his presence and unite us in his love, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbour in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people present who eat, who eat it. This is how you shall eat it, with your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord, for I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will ex execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. 
Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord and you are right for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Christ. Just as I have loved you, so you should also love one another. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Many historians have done in recent years that much of how we remember the First World War has been shaped by the memoirs of the late 1920s, where the trauma and horror seems to predominate. What Jackson's film underlined was that For those who fought, there was, amidst the horror, considerable camaraderie, a sense of purpose and commitment that many would miss once the war was over. During those four excruciating years, friendship accompanied horror, and great suffering became an opportunity for sacrificial love. This is not to diminish the horror, But as historians are always keen to stress, how and what we remember is complex, and I think highlighted vibrantly in the years immediately following the war in the paintings of Stanley Spencer. If you turn to the page uh, after my name, you'll see a painting by Stanley Spencer. And here, the horror seems strangely to find its response with tenderness, love, and domesticity. 
and likewise where love and domesticity seems to appear, so we see it also freighted with crisis. Some of you, I'm sure, have seen his magisterial frescoes at the Sandon Memorial Chapel near Highclere. And here, as there, we are invited into a world where violence doesn't have the final word, and yet where love is never cheap. Invited as we are in these three days to know a salvation not procured for us through heroic might or the overthrow of an empire, but in costly love of a life laid down for others. Remembrance in the Bible is quite different from what we might mean by it today. It doesn't just mean calling to mind. When the law in Exodus 12 commands the Israelites to observe the Passover as a memorial day, to be observed throughout your generations as an ordinance forever, remembering here has a meaning that is both present and active. When a Jewish family celebrates its cedar meal, it isn't remembering God's deliverance in the same way that we might remember the fallen during a two-minute silence on Armistice Day. Instead, the Jewish family will be inviting the same power of God to be active in their presence. When Jesus takes bread and wine and says, do this in remembrance of me, similarly, he wasn't inviting us just to make a memorial. We're not simply calling Jesus to mind, but inviting him to be actively present with power in the communion of the people. Look at this portrayal by Spencer of the last as we arrive here, tucked into this hallowed space amid ancient walls. And yet a closer inspection reveals the crisis and the tension which lurks. The feet and the toes that dominate don't seem to join up with the bodies very easily. These bodies seem twisted and out of joint. The beloved disciple falls rather than rests on the Lord, and Judas squirms away. A hand from nowhere rests upon the table between Judas and Jesus, and our eyes are drawn across the feet to the bread being broken, which at the painting centre is the focus for this tension amid the peace, and the peace amid the tension. For this Passover, this new deliverance from death and slavery comes not from on high in a dramatic, miraculous act as in Egypt, but in the self-offering of the Son of God who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Note that Jesus doesn't give us a manifesto, a lecture or a text but symbols in bread and wine and the washing of feet. In the sacrament, God gives himself for our food, inhabiting us in a way that our senses can only barely understand. And yet in this new communication of love, a new peace will be found. Before Jesus steps out into the night to confront betrayal, agony and death, he invites us to pause. As with these disciples, out of joint and ill at ease, he bids us stay here a while and receive the power that comes from his humility, from the tender and intimate washing of feet, in the giving of his body and his blood, signs to us that he had come from God and was going to God. But more than this, for us to say amen at the end of the Eucharistic prayer is to be drawn into this mystery. It is to be able to say that we, with God's grace, will know our exodus by sharing in the self-offering of the Son. Not only with lips in our liturgy, but in lives given over to others in sacrificial love. 
for Spencer painting his memorial chapel, as much for those voices whose, which are recorded in Jackson's film, there are echoes of this mystery shot through all creation. That in all the horror that death and sin present us in this life, love has, does, and will conquer for those who follow Christ on his royal path to Golgotha and to glory. As we prepare to follow Jesus into the chaos and terror of the hours ahead, let us stop a while and receive this medicine of immortality that binds us one to another, a new Passover and a new family. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another.
Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father through Christ, the Saviour of the world. Father, on this night, the night he was betrayed, your Son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. Give us the humility to love and serve others after his example. Lord, hear us. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one, as you and the Father are one. Unite your church in every land, and give us grace to love those whose faith and fervour we struggle to recognise, that we may see your gifts in all our brothers and sisters. Lord, hear us. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved, and for all who are persecuted for their beliefs. Grant us the courage of our convictions when hardship and disappointment weary us. Lord, hear us. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Welcome all your children into paradise, where you have prepared a place for them and make their joy complete. Lord, hear us. In fellowship with Mary and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to your unfailing love, saying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Mm -hmm. Until he comes again and feast with him in 
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When, when we, we eat, eat this bread and drink, drink this cup, cup we, we proclaim, proclaim your death, death Lord Jesus, Jesus until, until you come, come again in glory. glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that in this wonderful sacrament you have given us the memorial of your passion. Grant us so to reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may know within ourselves and show forth in our lives the fruit of your redemption. For you are alive and reign now and forever. Amen.
Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the Scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place, so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. <laughs> 